Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Good morning and welcome to Bind Us Together. I'm Pastor Peg Harvey Morose, the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We began Bind Us Together back in March 2020 when we were first on stay-at-home orders uh, as a way to remind us that we were not alone. God is always with us. God is always loving us, and God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ. We are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. Good morning, Ellen. So yesterday, um, I started a little series on uh, the covenant God made with uh, Abraham. Good morning, Jean. Um, and this is because we will be looking at part of uh, the, the covenant um, on the Old Testament reading on Sunday. And so I thought it would be fun to kind of go through because it was a, a later part of it. Um, that's part of the Lenten lectionary. We had the covenant with Noah last week and this coming Sunday is the covenant with uh, Abraham. So uh, we started yesterday in uh, Genesis uh, chapters 11 and 12, talking about, good morning, Debbie, uh, talking about the, the first time that uh, Abraham and Sarah, Abram and Sarai at that point um, are uh, found in, in Genesis and um, what it said about who Abraham was, uh, his character, and then uh, perhaps even uh, the character of God as, as we think about that. Um, because Sarai, his wife, was barren, had been barren for a while. And if he was... Uh, a usual guy at the time, he would have set her aside or taken on another wife, uh, but he didn't. He kept her as his wife. And so that says something about that relationship, about who Sarai was, who Abraham, Abram uh, was, and then also the character of God because God chose an unusual man for the time. Uh, to be the, the beginning of this process of covenanting with uh, humankind. So, hello, Flossie. Good to see you. All right. So, today we are going to look at Chapter Genesis chapter 15, verses uh, 1 through 6. And this is where um, the heading in my Lutheran study Bible is God's covenant with Abram. So this is the first time that uh, covenantal language has been used. And interesting to, to hear what it is that is the subject of the conversation that brings about this promise of God. So here we go. Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me 
for I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Sorry, my phone is going off. Let me... All right, sorry. Um, so, you shall, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. All right, so what was it that Abram was afraid of? Anybody? What was Abram afraid of? Yeah, I'm making you work this morning. Anybody out there? There we go. No heirs. That's right. Remaining childless. And um, this was important for a variety of reasons. So not just so that there would be a, a continuation of the genetics of course they didn't have genes at that time but um but there was also good morning Lorraine there was also a really practical aspect to this if you had no children who was going to take care of you in your old age having children was social security and if you didn't have children uh, you you could um, end up dying much earlier, uh, starving to death, whatever, in, in your older age. So having an heir status, yes, of course, there was, was status with that. I, I remember hearing um, a while ago, many years ago, um, about the population issue in India. And that um, uh, even though uh, birth control was made available there, that um, large families were still the, the tradition uh, and the tradition in the poorest of, of the society. And there was one darn good reason for that because uh, and it was seven, the magic number was seven children that if you uh if parents gave birth to to seven children then uh they were likely to have a male child because very patriarchal society um as uh israel and the middle east was at the time uh to have a, a, a male child who would then take care of them in their old age. So this was, if you were a farmer, it was help on the farm um, that you didn't have to pay because your children would then be contributing to the support of the family. So having children was really important for, a. this isn't just a, it isn't just a status thing um, and not just um, about uh, so that your name can go forward in history, but it really was um, a survival thing. So um, just like women whose husbands had died, um, if she didn't have a son to take care of her, uh, she needed to find another man to um to marry her uh 
for the protection that was provided because uh, women were not allowed to simply support themselves at the time. So, so there's a whole lot going on there. I mean, we're so used to uh, hearing about the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob um, as if that's um, the, the, the purpose of having these children. But there was just plain, real, practical reasons for having an heir so and having children so here uh Ab abram is is complaining to god uh, is laying out his fears to god that he continues to be childless and you know what's gonna my my heir is going to be this um named as a uh a slave in his household and not not real uh understanding of scholars of what exactly that means um but anyway and so we have this image that i remember uh teaching sunday school and this being a uh an image for the kids you know, to go outside and to look at the stars and uh, count the number of stars. And that is going to be the number of, of um, descendants that Abram was going to have. <clears throat> and then we have this last, this last line. So we, we don't have specific covenantal language here um, at this point. Um, the the covenant comes uh, later in the in the chapter and um, and it's a little strange, but that's okay. The this last verse, and he believed the Lord. So Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. So. So Abram trusted God, trusted that this was going to happen, that what, um, what God promised was going to happen. And then I love this, the last little section, uh, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. And what do we remember that righteousness is? Anybody? What is righteousness? It's not, it's not doing the right thing. It's not a list of do's and don'ts. Anybody? Let's see if you. All right, I'll tell you. It's about right relationship. So in Abram's trusting God, he is showing himself to be in right relationship with God. Right, right thinking, it, it's about relationship. And of course, right thinking uh, within that relationship, that, um, that trust. Yep, yep, it's about that trust, that right relationship righteousness is about right relationship it isn't about being right all the time it isn't that uh abram was perfect and never did anything wrong it's not about that it's about the relationship it's about that right relationship that's what righteousness is and and we'll get to to uh, to some points where uh Abram is a little shaky on this, uh, but at this at this point, Abram is trusting God, and um, there is this right relationship 
uh, between Abram and God. All right. So for those of you who were with me yesterday, I said that I had picked this song because of later texts that we were going to look at. And this is the one today. And so we're going to go on to verse two of You Are Mine because of the, the chorus, Do Not Be Afraid, I Am With You. All right, here we go. Verse two. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. Love that song. All right. So what are our prayer requests today? So I will start us out with um, trust in the Lord and um, striving for that right relationship with God. Mickey Marks, her cancer has returned. Okay. Vicky, I wrote down Mickey. Vicky Marks. Okay. Antonella, former QVC host who has lost job, home, and now has breast cancer. Antonella. <laughs> All right, prayers for Cindy. <laughs> Cindy, her insurance won't pay for the infusion. Uh, prayers for son Michael on his 38th birthday. Hey. Okay, so Lorene says, for the families of three of our seniors who died this week, who is our? <laughs> because I haven't heard of any seniors who have died this week. So... Who is the hour? All right, well, I'll go ahead and get started. Lorraine, if you could give me a little clarification on, on uh, who the seniors are, if it, Congo Press, all right, okay. It's like, 
Phew, I did, hadn't heard anything about it. So I was hoping it wasn't, uh, not that I'm glad that it's somebody else's uh, issue, but um, I hadn't heard anything, so. The Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the trust that Abram showed in you and that he was able through this trust to have this right relationship with you. Lord, help us to trust you more and more so that we might have a right relationship with you. We lift up Vicki Marks, whose cancer has returned. We pray that she will find a, a good way forward, uh, that she might have hope and healing. We lift up Antonella, who lost her job, lost her house, and now has breast cancer. We pray for comfort for her in her suffering. We pray for healing for her and hope for her as she has uh, struggled with so many, so many disasters one after another. We lift up Cindy and pray for protection for her as her insurance company won't pay for the uh, antibody infusion for COVID-19. Lord, protect her and help her to heal. We give thanks for the 38th birthday of Debbie's son, Michael, and uh, pray that uh, it will be a blessing. Uh, this day will be a blessing for him. We lift up the families of the three seniors at uh, Congo Prez who have died this week. Comfort them in their loss and help them to, to find uh, good and safe ways to remember their loved ones in this time of a pandemic. All of these things we lift up to you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I, I assumed that they were elderly seniors, not high school seniors, <laughs> Lorraine, but good clarification there. All right, my dear friends, thank you for being here with me this morning. And remember, be kind, wash your hands, stay at home if you don't need to go out. Remember your neighbors, share the good news, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.